Hey YouTube, back at you on the uh, additional aeration or supplemental aeration test that I've been doing on my Red Sea Reefer 625. So today is Friday. It's the uh, 31st of March, 2023. And uh, just to recap, if you haven't watched the previous videos in this playlist, um, I started uh, supplementing aeration in this tank to find out what kind of effects it would have on the corals as well as any parameters as far as the uh, uh, elements that are in the water, um, including pH, alkalinity, uh, salinity, any of that. So go back and uh, if you haven't already done so, watch uh, video one and two, uh, and that'll bring you up to speed. So here we are on Friday. I just did all of my weekly uh, water tests today. I have not done an ICP test, so I'm not going to get really deep into the weeds on what the trace elements are or any, uh, you know, the aluminum or anything like that, uh, or any kind of uh, negative elements that may be in the water. I've just done the test that we typically do as Aquarius, so uh, calcium, magnesium, the uh, alkalinity, salinity, um, what am I missing? pH, uh, and then just a, the just an everyday uh, test, the Hanna checkers, phosphate, nitrates, etc. So, uh, wrap those up today. Uh, I did not do the aeration yet, so I'm getting ready to put on the air stones so you can see. Um, here they are hanging, and uh, I'll get ready to put them on my seaweed clips. I just came back from the uh, local LFS Aquarium Depot here in Citrus Heights, uh, California, and uh, I picked up some Chato algae uh, from my other tank, and uh, or macro algae, some Chato, and uh, I've got a little clip in here to so give a little snack to a couple of my tanks. They tend to enjoy <laughs> A little nibble every once in a while that extra stuff so you get a pretty good uh baseball or softball size uh chunk from the lfs for like five bucks so uh, i use it my other tank um my red sea reefer is six uh, excuse me 250 and uh it really keeps my nitrates and my phosphates in check all right so what have i noticed from the additional aeration on this tank well, number one is the water has gotten a, a lot and I, a substantially more clear than even when it went to using the Red Sea Reef Mat. Uh, when I had to modify my sump and take the, re the socks out, the filter socks, and go over to the Reef Mat. That's the Reef Mat 1200, so that's the big boy. Um, I remember when I first put that in there a couple of days later, I was like, wow, that's how the water should have looked all along. Well, uh, with the additional aeration in this tank for a couple of, for two hours a day, for five days, the clarity on this water is, it's never looked as clear. I mean, this is like a bathtub. Um, it is, I'm sorry about the, uh, the waves there but I'll tell you what that is at you can, it's so clear you can see the little streaks on my glass where I need to get the Windex after it oh wow I mean you can see all the way through that tank and I, let me see if I can't get the glare out of there look at that you even saw my uh you can see where I scraped the um the algae, the, the, the kind of brown film that grows uh, on the glass on the back of there. Uh, I, I did that the other day, I think on Tuesday, and you can see how it's all the way through there. And that's a good, uh, what is that, about 30 inches deep. Look at the coloration on the corals as well. Now that has a lot to do with the lighting, of course, okay, but I have not changed anything on this tank. I'm still running the same parameters the same salinity, the same everything. I, you know, I'm still dosing my calcium, my alkalinity, um, and using my Neptune Apex, I'm tracking my pH. I'm at 8.3, 8.4 max every day. Uh, at night, it's like 7.9. So pH hasn't been affected at all. If anything, it's stabilized it a little bit more throughout a day. But Look at this lettuce coral here. It's getting green again. It used to be just purple. It's starting to get its green back. The uh, valley green slimer there, I've got a little bit of new growth on the tips on the top. 
Uh, this little guy here, he's just kind of laying over because the flow's not hitting him just right now. But that thing stood up about it, you know, as far as this leather coral. Look at the extension on the polyps on that, on that leather. Look at that. That has got to be a good quarter inch polyp extension. And that means he's eating the crud that's in the water, uh, Red, v, a, uh, Red C, A, B plus, as well as the refroids. Uh, my anemone is doing the candle axis, I believe, uh, is the scientific name of it, but my little anemone I've had for a few years, he's uh, doing really happy. Um, this leather, I think that's a devil's hand there. It's got the uh, polyp extensions. And then my zoas, these were brand new. I only had a couple of them, but uh, look at how clear and bright and happy everything is in here. Even the pulsing Xenia. And I talked about the little black bumps on there. I'm not sure if you go back on Monday and you look at this coral, this chalice, I see some growth there on the bottom. All right. Come on, where's my finger? Right there. If you see those little nubs coming down and then it's starting to curl up like a bowl. Um, so go back to the very first video and look at that. Or matter of fact, go back about a month ago when I did my uh, overview of this tank and see how that thing looked. And then this kind of purpley, uh, it's supposed to be a plating monty. So it's kind of curling over on top of itself. And look at the edges. I've got some growth about, oh, a quarter inch or so, all the way around the edges. And then this lettuce coral here, look at that color. Pow! My meat coral is happy as you can be. He's closed up. He got something in there, a piece of shrimp or something. But look at that, look at the zoas. Okay, I'll admit, one, one batch there is closed up, but look at this one. And look at that, and I know I need to move this guy. He's a dangerous one. He puts out his little feelers at night. My euphilia is kind of closed. He comes out in the morning, really sticks out. And then that little piece of lettuce coral actually broke off of the other big piece here. And it was about right there. And it was getting shaded by this, this leather coral. So I moved him over there about a month ago. And it's already starting to stand up and brighten back up. That is supposed to be my centerpiece coral, but I moved it over here because it loves the flow. And I figure if I just let that thing go, it's gonna grow as tall as my, the side of the tank here. And then I can cut pieces off of it, frag it out. Um, yes, I got GSP. I got the, the star polish all over and it's starting to grow over my good piece of little coral there. But I think they're gonna figure it out who's in charge and uh, be okay. Uh, another, Valley Green Slimer, he's growing, he's really happy. Little brown on this side, and that's just because it's away from the light, but if I were to go over, let's see if I can't do this. Go over here, you can see how green everything is. Look at that, that's looking all the way through the tank. Oh my gosh, look at that clarity. Look at that clarity. Look at that. Okay, folks, if this doesn't prove that additional aeration helps your tank, I don't know what does. Now. Let me show you something. You all know I run Dr. Tim's uh, bio pellets, and that's in the back reactor back there. The front one here is Fosgard. But look at the crud. Okay, usually that skimmer is a very, very dark dry scrim. And it is still dry skimming, but it's almost like a, uh, like a green tea color. There's almost no scent to it. So anything that was taken out of this water with that additional aeration and my filter sock, or excuse me, my, my fleece roller, I wanna go back there, um, has been captured in that skimmer. That is the Great White, uh, excuse me, Dulua Great White 10. I think they call it a GW10. That's the old version. It doesn't have the, the neck. And then I, I do use, let me get the light on there. I use some uh, CO2 absorbent media, and you can see it's about a quarter purple, but I use just a Fosban uh, reactor and then just run the inlet straight into the skimmer. But look at that clarity. Look at the clarity. That is the most amazing change to this tank I think I've ever seen. So here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing. I am going to continue my once a month 30 gallon water changes, which means I'm gonna to have to do it in a couple of days. 
Um, I am going to hook up a this air pump and I'm going to situate these air stones in the sump. I might even run them over the corner on each side, but I am going to run air stones in this tank two hours a day because this test just confirmed that not only did it absolutely blast the clarity out of the water. I mean, that's, that, that's just, look at, the, look at the color of those corals. They came back. I mean, they were kind of looking not real happy or whatever it is. Now, I don't know the, the additional aer, uh, aeration, that's more oxygen being fizzed into the water. But like I said, when you look at a reef and you look at the wave action and you see the kind of curling of the waves and all of that aeration and that foam, that's got to be taking stuff out of the water and putting something in, whether it's additional aeration, but it's also taking some of the stuff out. And you always see that kind of uh, in front of the wave foam, you kind of see that kind of crud. Well, I think that's what's ended up down in my protein skimmer. That stuff is being, you know, coming out of the tank. It's going into the, the uh, surface skimmer. It's going down over the overflow into the sump. It's getting captured by my reef mat. Then when it's not capturing, it's going into the skimmer. And then my bio pellets are just working with the bacteria. Um, and the Fosgard isn't really doing anything. Now, uh, I don't have them written down, but listening while you look at my tank, hopefully that'll be acceptable. Let me show you what my parameters were this morning. So I run the salinity on this tank at 35 parts per million. So 35. Okay, um, the calcium as of this morning was 430. So I may need to bump it up just a little bit. Alkalinity, 9.8. And that's pretty much stable throughout any given day. It could go up maybe 9.2 to 9.8, uh, 9.8 back down to 9.2, but it's pretty much dead on. So I'm, uh, you know, that's how I'm able to, to grow my my, money, my SPS that I have in here is doing good. All right, magnesium uh, has always been a chase for me because I don't automatic dose it. I dose magnesium by hand. It was at right at 1,300. Now, people are telling me I want to bump that up to about 1,500 uh, and get that rocking, and that'll help me get my, uh, you know, coralline growing a little bit better and... Uh, you know, might help the calcium, but it'll, it'll absorb and help the amount of the alkalinity and the calcium in the water. So uh, again, alkalinity 9.8, calcium 430, magnesium right at 1300, I believe it was. All right. Uh, excuse me, 1320. All right. Um, salinity was 35. Uh, what am I missing? Nitrates, 0.15, 0.15. So actually, let me back up. I'm sorry, 15, 15, not 0.15, 15. So uh, I remember 20 is the magic sweet spot for my nitrates on this tank. If I keep it at 20, my corals are happy and everything. So 15 on the nitrates as of today. Phosphates, 0 0.30. So they're a little high, but Considering my nitrates are a little higher than what most people tend to do, I like to keep a little bit more of a dirty water tank. I'm not shooting for a .001 and, or anything like that. And I do use HANA checkers on the phosphate and the nitrate, so I know they're super accurate. On the magnesium and the calcium, I use salifert. Everybody swears by them, including me. And I use them so much that I don't want to get the uh, the HANA checkers. Um, the HANAs... Uh, tend to the nitrate and the phosphate is fine. If I invest in any more Hannahs, I'm just spending so much money on the reagents, it's not worth it to me. Um, especially since I only have this tank and one other soft, strictly softy tank. Um, what am I leaving out? Nothing. All right. The Red Sea Reef LED 90s, uh, I have three of them on this tank. I'm running 70%. And 25%, so 70% blue, 25% white. Um, I have a one-hour moonlight at, I believe it maxes out at 10%. So it's, it ramps up, it's on for an hour. It's like comes on at 9:30, goes off at 11, something like that. But uh, yeah, I don't go, I don't take the moonlight over uh, about 10%. 
the um, uh, schedule as far as the lighting. The lights kick on at 9 a.m. There is a one hour ramp up to 70%, so from nine to 10. At 10 o'clock, it's max 70% blue, 20 uh, white. That goes until uh, 7 p.m. At 7 p.m., there is a two hour ramp down, so it goes from 70% down to zero, but it goes from seven o'clock at night until 9 p.m. So I have a full, just about 11 and a half hours of light in there, maybe a little bit less, but um, everything is doing really good. Look, I just can't get over that clarity in there. Now, all right, since that test has confirmed that aeration will help your tank, or mine in this case, I am going to set up a device to get that going. Additionally, uh, in the next couple of videos, probably this weekend, I'm gonna be changing out my reef leads uh, I was able to pick up some Kessels. So um, right now I'm running these 70%. So each one of those lights is about 100 watts. So I've got about, uh, what is that? Maybe 200, 200 watts total uh, of light. Uh, on the Kessels, I'm gonna be running 400. So I'm doubling the uh, output on the lights, but I'm gonna slowly acclimate everything. I'm gonna, you know, put uh, one on this side. Uh, I got the AP700s and they were a screaming deal. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put those on. And then uh, if anybody's interested in these reef leads, let me know. I might put them either on eBay or on my channel and see if anybody wants to pick those up for a decent price. Or I might just hang on to them in case, uh, you know, something goes wrong in the future and I don't have to go out and expend a bunch of money for on, uh, on light since these are confirmed to be working. My opinion, I know this is getting off topic of this video. My opinion, these reef leads, they're okay for a beginner. Um, I would not personally, on a big tank like this, I would not have any less than about four. Um, however, when you consider each one of them and the price for the Reef Lead 90s, go into the Reef Lead. Don't do Reef Lead uh, 50s on this, this big of a tank. This is a 625, by the way. Um, but the Reef Lead 90s go into the Reef Lead 160s, I believe, are the new hot thing. Uh, when you look at the Kessels and you look at the Radions, you look at the, uh, you know, the Max Specs, um, the, even the Neptune, um, the Sky, etc. Uh, you can get a hell of a lot better light for a reasonable price. These are more, in my opinion, an all-in-one fits. It's like buying a Chevy truck or a, a Ford truck. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work for the masses. But if you want to be specialized, you want to get in there and just really dial things in. And the only thing you can do on these lights is play with the red and the white, or excuse me, the blue and the white. Uh, everything else is locked. So like on an uh, AI Prime or a Hydra or something like that, you can go in there and tweak the, the greens, the reds, the violets, everything, the moon, you know, everything. Um, you know, uh, and then on the Kessels, they have wreath logic, which is very similar to the reef leads where the... Uh, Anyway, we're getting off topic, but I just want to share additional aeration on this on this tank. I'll tell you what. Look at the color. Look at the boom. Look at my happy banner fish. You ought to see him at nighttime when that moon's on. The moonlight is on. Oh, that white and the stripes. He just, wow. All right, folks. We just confirmed what I thought would be something. I'm glad it turned out the way it did because, you know, a little less than $20 air stone and air pump plug it in on a timer, put it in your apex, what have you. Look at that clarity. And we're dealing with the dirty health side of the tank. Look, we're looking at the... Uh, anyway, there is, you know, it, it does put out the, uh, like you saw in the other video, it does put out a little bit of salt spray, so be ready for that. But, my God, look at that clarity. Look at that. Look at that. Look, at everything is so, so happy. Oh, Year and a half old tank, baby. Yes, you're doing good. All right, YouTube. If uh, if you're wondering if Airstone will help your tank, my opinion, we just confirmed, yes, it does. All right, take care. Have a good one. We'll come back with another set of videos here shortly. Take care.